The first worst lineup, if you will, happened to be in the Bronx yesterday. And then happened to be the Yankees. Well, both games, actually. Yeah, I guess. The first game felt a little bit worse than the second, but both of them were uh, borderline unacceptable. But they won Uh, both games. I I mean, but it just goes to show you how injured the Yankees are, honestly. And, um, you know, certain guys showed up finally uh, for the Mets and other guys – you know, had a little bit of a redemption in terms of the Grand Slam with uh, Isaiah Connor falefa uh, Everybody's been all over his ass for, you know, for whatever reason. You know, out of the, like, 27 guys on the roster, like, he's the guy, he's like the, the I don't know, maybe like the 13th or 15th guy that maybe you want to say something about. Well, I mean, I'll tell you why. I mean, I think because he was the mascot for Brian Cashman going meekly into this. Uh, okay. Okay. That's I mean, what I, it I, is. Yeah, and going to get Josh Donaldson. And, and but that's what it was. Money. You wanted to know that you wanted to know I, the question. Just, uh, you asked the question. I gave you the answer. I mean, like, I was actually really, really happy for that guy yesterday, as were his teammates in the dugout. As you could see when he came into the dugout, sure. after he hit the grand slam. It was unbelievable. So, Both the Mets and the Yankees got their seasons uh, somewhat righted. I mean, and they won doubleheaders, which, you know, Al, it goes to prove that not all doubleheaders are splits. Um, And especially when the teams both needed it. And, of course, the uh, the Mets, uh, you know, have one more win than the Atlanta Braves. And now they go to Miami. And uh, the Yankees have uh, the Twins again tonight. Man, the Twins couldn't have come at a better time for the Yankees. Yeah, it's just perfect. I mean, it just goes to show you it really doesn't matter who the Yankees are. With those lineups yesterday, they're going to beat the Twins in every single situation. Doesn't matter what the year, who the players are, where the games are. Just doesn't matter. They are going to beat the Twins. And the Marlins have lost nine in a row. So hopefully it'll end up being a continued streak. Don't don't even say that. I I know. know. I always think the same thing. Like, oh, at some point they're going to get right. If they've lost nine in a row, they're going to have to win some games. That's always my mentality. But I, uh, I really hope that the Marlins continue to stink because that's exactly what the Mets need. And, oh, by the way, the Atlanta Braves now out on the West Coast. Going to be a little bit more difficult for them as they take on the Seattle Mariners who are in the midst of their best season in 21 years. Right. Well, you know what? Go beat them. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. all I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, right. And right, right. Uh, do, do what you got to do. You got to take care of business tonight against the Twins, who, who always seem to be like your doormat. And they put up on yes yesterday. I don't know if it was Amazon, like, you know, trying to figure out where the game is and everything else. Yeah, I mean, like, that first game I had to shut off. I, I the, In the extra innings where they couldn't score after that 3-2-3 three, three double play, I said, I can't watch any more of this. I can't. I well, cannot. Guzman is just a, I cannot, he's a waste. I mean, the guy, God. I mean, he was he was 0 for 4 already. He had the, uh, what, the golden sombrero already in the game and then grounds into the 3-2-3 three, three double yeah, play. How about him looking behind as he's running down first base? I mean, now, one, he, one, you know, he flinched. His big head says something about it. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, he's still he's looking over his shoulder. Like, what, what are you looking over your shoulder for? And I look, it just, you know what, just look bad. Yeah, I mean, he's and not. now you know why this guy's not in the majors. This right. is why he's stuck down in the minors. Yeah, well, it takes 75 injuries for him to surface into the major leagues. That's exactly oh, why. God, but, bad. but they won. But I had to shut it off. I watched the last episode of, of Hard Knocks. That's what I did at that point. I was like, I'm getting ready for football. I can't take this anymore. I got more baseball games to watch tonight. I can't. I just can't. I can't do it. And we got football it. tonight. And we do have football too, tonight. By the way. And, uh, you know, we also, I know this is not big on your radar. I know it's not big on your radar. But it is big on my radar because oh, we finally got a U.S. men's singles finalist. And Francis Tiafo, who won an unbelievable match last night, 7-6, seven, 7-6, six, seven, six, and 6-4. Six, well, I do care because the uh, last uh, men's finalist. No, uh, no, no, no. You no didn't sports do a sports minute no, on no, this? No, no, because I wanted and to And you're bringing it up it. in the first five minutes? This yes. is crazy. I'm just saying it was great last night. And by, I, I got to say, I just, I, I don't know. This is just my opinion. I get paid to give an opinion here, so yeah, I forgot I, to give an opinion. Gotcha, yeah. I like Chris Fowler doing tennis with John McEnroe. Okay. I do. I just, I'm just, I'm just saying that. I don't, I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm just saying it was a very comfortable broadcast. He's been doing this for like a decade. Yeah, but he's really good at doing it. Just noticing this now. Well, I mean, like I said, I'm not really. No, it's a good show, Friends. Actually, it's actually a pretty good show. I just noticed. You're funny. funny. You know, it's even better show. (laughs) Andy Griffith. Oh yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. No, but I'm just saying. I thought I thought Chris Fowler does a great job. He's very relaxed, and and he and John have a good sense with each other and uh and and so does patrick but i i this is great last night to was see it? an american man make it to the u.s open finals that's great yeah sure great good okay Happy. so that's all i'm saying i'm, I'm 
He beat a Russian. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> that, that's right. I like so that even better. If you if you take some joy in that. And by the way, this kid grew up in College Park, Maryland. You know where that is. Oh, well, of course, yes. You're no, very familiar with that. shadow of the University of Maryland. Yep. The American dream. His parents escaped the Civil War in Sierra Leone. Mm. And his dad came over, and he went to work for a friend of mine. Really? Yes. Got by the name of Ray Benton, who was a part of Bell, Denton, and Falk, a law firm that uh, created ProServe down in uh, Washington, D.C. And, and Donald Dell, a very famous tennis player and then a tennis agent who represented people like Jimmy Connors, Yvonne Lendl, uh, Chrissy Everett, people like that. And uh, his father was, uh, was hired as a custodian on the property, and he and his two boys lived on the property. Wow. And this kid turned out to be a great tennis player, tennis prodigy, if you will, because he was exposed to it. And yeah. you saw it last. You know, well, you, well, anybody who's watched any of his matches through the U.S. Open, there you have it. You, you That's have it. the lie that America tells you and the American dream. <laughs> you know, if you want to work hard enough and you can achieve it, you can't, actually. It's a big, fat lie. <laughs> no, it's not. So Francis TFO has already made over $6 million as a professional tennis player. Did you know that his great aunt is none other than Oprah? I did not know that. That's because I just made it up. Yeah, okay. I just made that up. I don't know why yeah. you would make that up. Well, because all the other I stuff sounded made it, up to me as it's well. It's not made it up. That's a true just, story. Yeah. That's all 100% right. true story. Yeah. Okay. She's probably doing ESPN 3030 on him or something. I'm sure that they will. Maybe they should. I'm sure that they do. You know, why can't we have a little pride? And I and I will check out on that like I've checked out on the last three minutes. <laughs> no, you haven't checked out. I can't. I no, mean, I'm so, I've got mood. nothing I for mean, you like, with look, this. I'm gotta, not, not a goddamn the thing. Won, the Mets won. Yeah. I don't have to listen to the Yankee fans bitch right. about Garrett Cole mm -hmm. and, and Isaiah kind of Falefa and everything else today. And we got the Bills and Rams tonight. And you and I are going to be at the Matt Martin Foundation. That's right. Tournament. So we, we are we hanging out tonight. a lot of things going on, man. I'm, I'm pumped. There are a lot of things going on. And I'm glad that you're pumped, and I'm glad that you're not down about the Zach Wilson news that came out of nowhere I knew yesterday. That, that's, you know what? He does, he's going to miss a month. I'm sorry. We knew he was going to miss the first game. The fact that he was going to miss three games, I'm I, sorry. Dude, that was I, something I, new. I, I, dude, I told you that, you know. With you didn't tell me he was missing three games. With a meniscus and a bone bruise that it was unlikely that we would see him the first month of the season. I mean, I don't know what. You know, it's, I don't it's, listen. It's that, was not, that came out of nowhere. The, the first month of the season the, came out of nowhere. First, the, it was two to four weeks. He might be available for week one. Then Sala was like, hey, he even said it in the cuts that CeeLo was playing yesterday. I know, but that's— That he had that, a shot, and we were like, there's no way he has a shot in playing week one. But a month? That's the, that, that is the monkey wrench is because of what Sala said and how he said it. And somebody probably went to him and said, hey, Rob, stop. You know, stop putting pressure on the kid. The kid's knee didn't respond maybe to the workout or whatever. And let's be realistic. You know, this is we're going to go with Joe Flacco the first month of the season. Now, I'm going to go back to this. And I know that, you know, I know the realities of the league. And I know that they drafted him number two overall. And I know we all expect to see, you know, him on the field. And that's what you're what you're hoping for a Jet fan. This kid's going to be your, you know, your 10 to 15 year starter. I, I hope so, too. I, I'm just telling you from the other side of the coin where the other athlete sits, and even though he's 37 years old and he's thrown for over 41,000 yards and 227 touchdowns, I threw for more. Mm. Uh, so uh, it's just I would just say that if I'm the other athlete, I'm holding on to this job. And the only way he can hold on to this job is if they go out and win and, you know, and he plays his ass off. Now, at the age of 37, they're asking Matt uh, Ryan to do this in Indianapolis. You know, at over 40, they're asking Tom Brady to do this. Uh, they're asking Aaron Rodgers to do this. And I'm not saying that he's any one of those guys. Yeah. But I'm saying he's more than capable of going out there and taking this young group of players that really are a, a number of high-end, uh, you know, athletes out there and get them in the right spot, communicate correctly with them, get rid of the football, and move this offense like he did last year. All right. So 2019 – 2020 and 2021 neck injury he neck has I, i'm not saying i'm not going with injuries oh i'm sorry he has started oh 13 games yeah and he's like three and ten or something uh he is two and eleven okay well in close. the last 13 games i know i know but he's he also is. lost his last seven starts right well he started out in denver when when baltimore traded him to denver right there mm -hmm. were denver side of his fridge or whatever and it was not good it was not a good fit the coaching staff and he it just wasn't right you know, and then uh, and then he hurt his neck, you know, and his neck hadn't been right. And, and from all indications, from what I'm being told, he's 100 percent healthy. I 
I'm not saying he's the future of the Jets. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it from the athletic perspective, from the athlete himself. He has an opportunity now, you know, and, you know, Sal is uh, just gushing over him. But he has an opportunity now to, to say, hey, you know, I am a starting quarterback, and let me show you why I believe that I should be a starter in the NFL. That's all I'm saying. Sure. I'm not saying that he should take over for Zach Wilson. No, no, no. I'm saying what he should do is go out there and play his ass off and make it a really difficult decision for the Jets. It should never. I mean, it <laughs> what are you going to do if they're three and one and he's averaging, you know, 280 yards a game and two touchdowns and he's thrown two interceptions in three games and and the team has won three out of the first four. Yeah, games Yeah, I mean, if th- if that happens, then obviously he's going to have to play a little bit more. But there's just I can't imagine that happening with the yeah, way that he has played. The the last three seasons. And I would say the problem is they're opening up against the AFC North, all four teams yep. right in a row. And you have three of the best four defenses in football in the Ravens, Browns, and uh, Steelers. The Bengals have a good defense. You know, I don't know if it's a top 10 defense, but I know that the, you know, the Browns, Ravens, and Steelers <laughs> all believe that they have top 10 defenses. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's it's not going to be easy for either Zach Wilson or Joe Flacco, even though Joe Flacco has seen him before, but Joe Flacco is not the same player as he was when he was Super Bowl MVP and went and got that contract. I mean, he's a complete shell of himself. And then most times when you see him, he doesn't look like he doesn't even want to be there. Right. So half he, the time on the sideline. So you got Lamar Jackson, you know, Jacoby Prasad, so what? Uh, Joe Burrow, uh, Mitch Trubisky, or Kenny Pickett at that time, Tua Tunga Vailoa, mm-hmm. Mac Jones, I mean, you got you got some pretty good young quarterbacks that you're going to see here early on in the season, and you know if I'm if I'm Joe Flacco, I swear to God, I'm just I'm I'm going to go out there and I'm going to just try to sh- just shut everybody up. That's that's basically would be the chip on my shoulder. But is he that type of guy though? I I no, he's. I mean, the, you, I, you you tell me all the time that he's gotten like the the, the flatliner stuff that you say about Daniel Jones. Well, is he publicly, that type of guy is walking publicly, into this thing with a chip on his shoulder. You know, publicly he is a flatliner. There's no question about it. I think internally he's probably a pretty good competitor. You wouldn't have won a Super Bowl and a Super Bowl MVP. But I also know that when he was with the Baltimore Ravens, he didn't have to be the guy. You know, it's kind of like but he Matt was though for that one that, season. Yeah, yeah, but he didn't really have to be the guy because he had Ray Lewis there and he had John Harbaugh there. As far they as the were the guy, they were the yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of like Matthew Stafford out in L.A. Matthew's a hell of a player. He's a great player in Detroit, but he was never that Aaron Rodgers, uh, uh, you know, Tom Brady alpha male, uh, Josh Allen alpha male, Joe Burrow alpha male, uh, Justin Herbert alpha male. All those guys are the face of their franchises. You know, Matthew Stafford. When he was the face of the Detroit Lions, you could say it was probably a lot to do with the Lions and their decision-making. But I would also tell you that his personality meshed well with Sean McVay because Sean McVay is the face of that franchise. Yeah, I know what you're saying, that he didn't need to be. Well, now with this young team and the young quarterback out and he being the veteran and he's got to get this team with high expectations or higher expectations out to a good start, well, then you need to see a little more from him. Well, of course so. I, I, I'm and just, I don't know if he's capable of that. I just I, I don't know. Kind of had the same similar situation for me. Yeah, but you, I mean, you I'm had that BDE you. back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Does Joe Flacco have that? I I what I had what? The BDE. B. D E. <laughs> Just know, tell me what the E stands for. Energy. Okay, I think I know what the B D stands for. All right, for. you had that. Okay. Joe Flacco does not have that. Well, maybe. Hopefully, he does. I would. I would look at it. I don't, if it were me, I would look at it as an incredible opportunity to utilize a lot of good young players, whether it be Wilson, whether it be Moore, uh, you know, whether you know their stable of running backs that they have. Uh, a young, you know, an offensive line. Now, here, here's the one thing. The one thing, there's always got to be one thing with the Jets. All right, so it's more than one thing, but it, because it, because it's, you know, Zach Wilson is the one thing. Mm-hmm. But the the second thing, you know, you know I follow Rich Samini. He follows of course, you know, yeah. the team every single day. He's yep. over there, right? Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, poor Rich has got PTSD from covering the Jets all these years. He's always got to look for something that is even worse than just not having your starting quarterback. I mean, what could be worse than that? What could be worse than that? Well, Rich, somewhere, somehow, I don't know if it was ESPN research or he went to pro football reference or I don't know what he did, but he came up with some mind-boggling negative stat to make us all feel really good about the Jets starting off this season. And that is the fact that no team in the history of the NFL that they can go back and find has ever started with a left tackle who's 37 and older and a quarterback who's 37 and older. (laughs) 
So that was like the, the negative tweet of the day yesterday <laughs> yeah. Yeah. from my man, Rich Samini. And I'm yeah. like, Rich, you know, see, he's been hit over the head with the idiot yeah. stick so much. Like, <laughs> a like, long time. He just had to find something. Of course. And he did. And I don't know if he found it or somebody gave it to him, but he certainly found it. Uh, by the way, how much money do you think Joe Flacco has made in his career? I'd love like Al to take a shot at this. How much money has Joe Flacco made to this point in his NFL career? $53 million. <laughs> No, more than that, Al. Much more than that. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I knew you would be way off. That's why I went to you first. Eddie, do you have a guess how much money? Uh, $89 million. <laughs> How does this sound to you? Because I know Boomer would probably get close. $174 million Joe Flacco has made. This is why the man has no chip on his shoulder at this point. <laughs> this is why. $174 million for Joe Flacco and his unibrow and his no personality. You really did hit it at the wrong time. I, you, <laughs> you really did. You know, you're not kidding. Why Holy are you hell. For? I mean, like, you know, you laugh at me. I'm not laughing at you. You've you, done well and, and, for yourself. You've done I'm very doing well. well for myself. You've but done I'm very doing very well. I'm $147 million worth of well for myself. <laughs> you know, it's funny, uh, you know, talking to Dave Lapham and his podcast. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. About the Bengals. He goes, you know, Boomer, I've never seen a quarterback in all my life take care of his offensive lineman the way that you used to take care of your offensive lineman in Cincinnati because he was there to cover it. Yeah, that's right. And, he, you know, look, when when – when Anthony Munoz retired, the Bengals didn't give him anything. I gave him an Explorer. <laughs> it's know, awesome. And whatever. But but the point being, I said, you know, Dave, could you imagine if I were playing today and I were making $40 million a year? I think I would have written each one of my offensive linemen a $1 million check. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.